Gloomhaven is a strategically deep, richly thematic experience acclaimed as one of the greatest games of all time. It's also big, like super big, and setup takes forever and learning can be a total bear. Yes, it is incredibly rewarding, but the barrier to entry is intimidatingly high, especially for newcomers and people used to more casual games. But they want a piece of that sweet, sweet gloomy pie too, which is where Jaws of the Lion steps in. A smaller, albeit still incredibly dense box, Jaws is for all intents and purposes the fun size family snack pack of Gloomhaven. Four new characters, 25 missions, a five mission tutorial that breaks apart the learning process into gradually more complex concepts. This is an exceptionally ambitious project to preserve the spirit and the depth of Gloomhaven while making a much more accessible game. And it really, really works. If you've followed this channel at all recently, you'll know my Gloomhaven story here. Yeah, I played it some when it first came out, and I recognize its merits, but I bounced off of it. It wasn't my game, so I didn't fully wrap my brain around everything, and setup took a ton of time. Didn't help that I picked an ultra-complicated psionic rat character to start out with, and then you compound that with all sorts of time and commitments and yada yada, and it just kind of fizzled. Then, more recently, I decided to take a fresh stab going through Solo, where I'm the showrunner, fully immersing myself, doing research, organizing things, using helpful stuff like apps, dice, organizers, and BAM! I'm in love. I played a ton of it. But now I have this new box to contend with, which is an interesting thing because I'm no longer the inexperienced Gloomhavener that found the original too opaque, but I can still sympathize with them. So to balance things out, I invited my wife, a seasoned gamer who also bounced off of Gloomhaven harder than me, and my buddy Mike, a veteran Gloomhaven super fan, to round out the crew and see how this new beast holds up both as an onboarding tool and just as a fun thing for experienced adventurers. And in the end, we all kinda loved it. To start, you get your choice of four characters. If playing solo, you must play as two. Off the bat, these have really interesting and varied concepts and designs. Mike's Volrath Redguard manipulates enemy position, deals direct damage, and is good at going toe-to-toe -to -toe through a combination of solid melee attacks and self-heals. Christina's Quattral Demolitionist is our beefy, if not altogether big, super aggro character, packing a lot of heavy damage attacks, consequences for enemies being up against walls, and obstacles destruction. She's kind of the set up then big payoff type of character. I pick the Enox Hatchet because someone needs to be the edgelord and how cool is it that he specializes in axes? A ranged character who can just stack up the damage, his shtick is that he ends up equipping and deploying his favorite axe, which can be retrieved from foes and some cards change based on whether or not the enemy that you're attacking already has your favorite lodged in their mostly dead skull. The one we didn't pick is the Human Void Warden, who's mostly a support character packing buffs, debuffs, manipulation, and other range attack shenanigans. What I can say is that the characters, while not as complex as the most complicated of the unlockable characters in the original Gloomhaven, already have really interesting abilities with powerful thematic resonance that makes them incredibly fun to play, so much so that I think they are far more intriguing and dynamic than most of the starting Gloomhaven roster. Okay, so we got our new characters, but we have to talk about the tutorial. And I'm betting for about half of you out there, you're like, yes, please, a tutorial that finally makes it so I can grasp this whole Gloomhaven goodness that people have been talking about for so long. But for another half of you out there, you're like, yo, I heard this is compatible, I want more content, I hope that this tutorial isn't going to be a noob handholdy hassle getting in between me and enjoying this thing. And I think it has both of you covered. The way it works is you have the scenario book, which is the layout of your missions, more on this beautiful beast in a bit, and the learn to play guide. This thing walks you through the concepts you'll learn in each of the five missions and what you do as a consequence. Also, the characters themselves have specific sets of cards that are used for each mission, progressively expanding or becoming more complex and powerful as you get to the end. The first mission has you killing some fools, learning about how to run the enemy's basic attacks, movement, short rest, then you move 
move on to traps, money, and some more status effects, resulting in shopping between missions, then treasure, more complex cards, then experience, leading to perks and city events, eventually to elements, alternate objectives, spawning, and eventually bosses, then leveling up and the whole shebang. These tutorial missions, especially the first three, are short enough that their simplicity and ease isn't going to be much of a bother to veterans while still acting as an excellent teaching tool for newcomers to the game. And speaking of ease, by mission four, you're already having to make really tough strategic decisions going, holy hell, how are we going to make it out of this alive? And the fact that it rolls out upgrades to your character from the initial starting loadout to better cards to more cards to just being fully fledged Gloomhaven characters and you're getting little things like perks and equipment and money and things are expanding after each one of those tutorial missions, you still have that really sweet sense of progression that is one of the best things about Gloomhaven itself. The thing is that removed from the context of Gloomhaven, this would still be among the most intriguing dungeon crawlers available today, with a wide mix of new and returning items and enemies, lots of branching paths, interesting characters, variable difficulty and strategic depth. This is an incredibly compelling set that we are absolutely going to continue through to its completion. That said, within the context of Gloomhaven, there are a few notable things that veterans might lament. First is the greatly reduced amount of unlock content. Each character has two packs of cards in the box to be opened at specific times as a result of them becoming more powerful, and then there are four more roughly miniature sized boxes that hold some goodies, but no wide roster of characters, driving life goals, mysterious envelopes, and sealed logs that weave the incredibly rich legacy tapestry the original is known for. Yes, you will put stickers on things and unlock things, find secret items, go on optional missions, and the characters have perks and get new cards as normal, but this is a much more focused box with far less expansive content. Also, this is nowhere near the open world sandbox of the original. Yes, side quests and branching paths are abound, but in the original you sometimes felt like every mission you completed somehow resulted in two new paths you could go down, with often five or more possible quests at your disposal any time. Generally, your options here will be more narrow and the main story will make up a bulk of the adventure, meaning less divergence from campaign to campaign. That said, Jaws of the Lion, like everything Gloomhaven so far, is designed to be compatible with each other. Characters can export from here, and you can have the dynamic rich experience as you move on to Gloomhaven proper. Or if you're just looking for more missions to do once you've completed the original, this is just more content to add to your already buckling Gloomhaven shelf as you bring characters from the original Gloomhaven into this one. That said, there are some things that aren't meant to be combined. This is to be viewed as its own distinct campaign, and things like items, monsters, and events aren't meant to cross over as they're balanced for this campaign campaign, but characters are fully crossover capable, and the Jaws of the Lion characters can be introduced off the bat as starting characters, ignoring the reduced potency early tutorial character cards to Gloomhaven proper. What makes Jaws of the Lion so great is that it preserves the essence of the original, the things that make Gloomhaven so stunning in the first place, while having a lot of really smart concessions that are just on the whole improvements even outside of the context of a teaching tool. Take the scenario book for example. One of the biggest criticisms of the original was that setup and takedown took so long. Here you opened up to the scenario you're playing and boom! No tiles, no translating icons from the book onto the play area, nothing. You play directly here and you may be all, doesn't that limit map configurations? Yeah, they thought of that. You just open the supplemental book, which may be used for more play space, extra scenario descriptions, and all kinds of other stuff. This thing rules and is honestly a way better approach than the original game. I mean, sure, yes, there are less possible configurations that you could have, but as someone who never wants to sort tiles again or try to figure out how to fit them all back into the box with its lid actually closing, not to mention the amount of time and space that are saved by using this method, I would prefer that all future Gloomhaven content had something like this.
And these conveniences extend to the whole thing, from tiny rule adjustments like allowing characters to freely trade items, though not gold, to removable inserts that hold all your stuff, to the brief clarifiers on the initial character cards, to the dedicated tutorial book and separate rules reference and index. This package is not just a distillation, but also an exciting evolution that makes me really eager to see what's to come. So in short, I love this thing. It's approachable and intuitive, but strategically and thematically deep. It is just one of the most potent game packages that is available right now. Don't get me wrong, I love the original, and the gargantuan amount of content is a big part of that. Retiring characters, opening new content, the sandboxiness, heck, the world even feels more unpredictable and dangerous with road cards that add risk and variation to missions, something that Jaws draws. But for most gamers, except those who really want to go all in at the get-go, I would definitely start them at JAWS, both because it's more concise, affordable, and on the whole, I feel it's more refined. The concessions that it makes in order to make it a more approachable game, combined with the fact that there's so much good game and interesting game between the characters, the scenario design, the new equipment, the monsters, everything. It is just a fantastic freaking package for beginners and experienced Gloomhaveners alike. And that is our review, but it doesn't have to end there. If you want to see more Jaws of the Lion content, be them character spotlights or a Q&A session with me or the whole group talking about our individual experiences and perspectives in a much more open sort of way or anything else, then let us know in the comments below and we would be happy to keep it coming. And so with that, thank you so much for watching. I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald.